So here I'm going to discuss acetals as protecting groups, which is covered in the aldehydes and ketones, nucleophilic addition, and alpha substitution reactions chapter. And the first thing we're going to discuss is why we need to protect aldehydes and ketones. And aldehyde and ketones are easily reduced and attacked by a range of different nucleophiles, and also aldehydes are easily oxidized. So classically, here we have an example where an aldehyde is being attacked by a nucleophile and a nucleophilic addition reaction to form this alkoxide ion intermediate. And we can use a range of different nucleophiles with either aldehydes or ketones. To prevent your aldehyde or ketone being reduced, oxidized, or prevent it from reaction with a nucleophile, we can protect it. And the classic way of protecting an aldehyde or ketone is to convert it into an acetal. In this particular example, we're reacting a ketone with ethane-1,2-diol, a common readily available diol with an acid catalyst to convert it into a cyclic acetal. And this five-membered ring here is called a 1,3-dioxalane. Importantly, this cyclic acetal does not react with nucleophiles or redox reagents, so it's much less reactive than the starting ketone. To get the ketone back from the cyclic acetal, all I have to do is react it with acid and water, and here is my ketone that I started with. Formation of the cyclic acetal is called a protection step. Conversion of the cyclic acetal back to the ketone is called a deprotection step. And I can use ketones or I can use aldehydes in this transformation so I can protect either of those functional groups. Let's now have a look at an example of the use of an acetal protecting group in synthesis. And here is my starting material, which contains both a ketone and an ester functional group. And what I want to achieve is reduction of the ester. I want to form a primary alcohol, but I want to retain the ketone group within the product. The problem with doing this is that if I take a reducing agent with this reagent, such as lithium aluminium hydride, the first thing that will happen is I will reduce the ketone. This is the most reactive carbonyl. So what I need to do is to protect the ketone, and that's what I'm going to do in this transformation. I'm going to react it with ethane-1,2-diol with an acid catalyst, just as we saw before. I'm going to introduce my cyclic acetal, which is shown here. This cyclic acetal does not react with lithium aluminium hydride, so I can now add in lithium aluminium hydride, and following acidic workup, I form this primary alcohol, and the acetal remains intact. All that remains now to complete the synthesis is conversion of the cyclic acetal back to the ketone. So in hydrolysis, under acidic conditions, I can deprotect the cyclic acetal, form my ketone, and so I now have my target molecule. 